Hi, welcome back to my video, which has been a long time coming, all about the closet case patterns, ginger jeans. So if you're interested to see how I got on and what I think of this pattern, then please stay tuned. So today's review is really my thoughts on uh, the closet case ginger jeans, how I got on and any changes I will make for the next pair. So before we get started, um, people often say what they're wearing. So I'm wearing a Ogden cami that you may have seen in previous videos um, that I made from this lovely uh, green silk from uh, Thailand, I believe. Um, right, so let's get straight into it. I was lucky enough to get the pattern from the pattern swap that happened on Instagram last year. I'm trying to think, June, July time, I think it was. But it was a really great little swap for someone like myself, as I had hardly any patterns before it. Although I did put on, I think about six um, to swap myself. But there were a few patterns I really wanted and this was one of them. So you basically could upload patterns and say, this is what I've got. If you're interested, please let me know. And then you could also say you were interested on other people's patterns and I would like that one, please. And um, I managed to grab hold of one of these copies. So I was really chuffed. And then the fabric that I used was from Abacan. So I ordered online and <laughs> totally my fault. I left it till the last minute. <laughs> I completely forgot. Um, although I had the course booked for ages, I kind of forgot that we needed fabric for <laughs> For the course so um, not long before the course I went onto the Abercam's website and I managed to get two fabrics one for the toile and one for the jeans so this is the jean fabric that I got from Abercam can't remember exactly how much it cost but it was really reasonable and it's got like um you can't really tell but it's got about a three to five percent stretch which is perfect for the ginger jeans um, so it's a lovely basic denim color and um, I was really chuffed with that, it's a lovely denim. But to start with, we made a twirl. So I used this fabric, um, which as I say, also from Abercam, which I don't know if you can see, it's like um, a chunky cord and also stretch. So I had the same stretch as the denim. And when we made up our twirl, um, I thought actually, I'm gonna make these into a pair of trousers at some point. Um, so I lined them and did all sorts of stuff which kind of got me in trouble with the class. And I wasn't the only one, because <laughs> the idea of the toile was just to get basic fit. And we were all trying to do finished trousers on our toile. So um, I used this lovely chunky cord in this sort of um, teal color, coarse blue, had to be blue for me. Um, and um, I had a jean zip, so that was the first time we'd ever done a fly. And um, also we did the pockets. So I'll go into more detail on the real jeans, but that was my twirl um, that we made from the chunky cord. And before I go on to show you my jeans and about the pattern and what I thought, I just thought I'd let you know, in case you're thinking, what did I think? I obviously loved them because A, I wear them pretty much every day. Um, and B, I already bought this fabulous, I don't know if it'll show up well because it's black, but this fabulous black stretch denim. And this was from Jay at the Fabric Edit. If you haven't ever checked out one of her sales, please do. She does them monthly, although she's having some um, health issues at the moment. So I sent her all my best. She's a lovely lady and she's one of my favorite vloggers. So um, hopefully we'll see you back on the screen soon, Jay. Um, but this was from her sale and it is for my next pair of jeans because that's how much I like them. Right, so let's get into the pattern. So in the pattern, um, it had the measurements to go from. So in the first day of the class, oh, sorry, I should say for anyone who, who wasn't aware that I did a workshop, so a two day workshop where I got the majority of my jeans done and then I finished um, the rest of it at home. But inside the ginger jeans, you get, you get, you get the ginger there. Jeans? Ginger jeans. You get a fabulous little booklet um, really good illustrations to help uh, see all my ticks when I've done every section. <laughs> um, but right at the beginning, 
and you've got your measurements. So obviously that's the first thing we did. And I worked out from my measurements that I was basically a straightforward size 14. So we went for a 14 and I didn't make any adjustments to the pattern pieces for the toile. And then when I tried on the toile, oh, I'll just hold them up again for you. When I tried on the toile, what we found was the, um, the yoke where it joined at the back, I needed to alter the pattern to take that in a little bit. So we took the yoke in and I don't know if you can see, let me see, I'll do a photo if you can't see, but there is where I took it in. I don't know if you can see that, I'm not sure. Um, because it was a bit loose around there. And then when I tried them on, I'm hoping you can see this, actually the um, curve for the hips was way too big. So actually I sliced off quite a lot um, from the hips and then all the way down the legs as well. I found the, um, the fit quite well around the waist, like I say, a little bit off the yoke. And then from the hips down, I probably took off, oh, a centimetre and a half at least all the way down so possibly could have got away with a 12 but I'm happier to cut larger and cut it down um, because although I've uh, in recent years put on a bit of weight around my middle area my legs are still quite skinny so to get the skinny fit jeans I took them in quite a lot um, I absolutely love the instructions obviously I had my tutor on the workshop who really really helped but the booklet um, is really great so um, I followed it step by step and any problems I had I spoke to uh, Vanessa so when you're doing the ginger jeans or any jeans really um, you need a couple of things that are pretty standard so first thing is you need a good top stitch this was a very classic uh, jean color it's like a mustardy orange so I got two of those for the top stitching you also need to have the correct needle. So I did buy two lots of needles. I bought jeans needles here and I also bought top stitching needles. But actually, speaking to Vanessa, my sewing instructor, she suggested trying the top stitching for everything because otherwise it's quite complicated because obviously you're stitching some of them ones in like the matching blue which would theoretically be in the jeans needle, then you're swapping your needle to top stitching and swapping your thread to top stitching and doing that bit and then swapping back. And so it's quite um, quite complicated to sew the jeans. So actually I did, I did do that. I tried top stitching and the main stitching just with the same needle, which was my top stitching needle, and it worked perfectly. So I did that all the way along. Um, and in actual fact, in my next pair of jeans, to make things a bit simpler, because there is a lot of stitch as much as you can with your matching thread, but then you do have to top stitch as you go along. So there's a lot of swapping and changing. And <laughs> at one point I did all of the outside of my legs stitched together, really pleased and chuffed with myself till I realized I'd done it all in top stitching thread. So <laughs> not only did that waste a lot of my thread, uh, but I had to unpick it and do it all again. So in my next pair of jeans, with that lovely black denim I showed you, I'm gonna set up my old singer, my lovely old singer, with the top stitching thread and the top stitching needle. And then I'm gonna set up my brother and novice, my main sewing machine, with the black thread and the jeans needle. And then what I'll do, I'll just swap from one to the other instead of having to constantly change the needle out. I mean, I'm very lucky. I don't know how many of you have more than one machine, um, but I'm very lucky to have a few machines in my sewing room and those two are set up on the table so I can just work from one to the other. So I'm hoping that will make it go a bit quicker. The other things that you need to give you that um, really good jean look is the jean buttons and the jean rivets. And I bought some buttons on Amazon, which I thought were pretty cool um, because they weren't your regular uh, standard jeans buttons. However, when I got them, they were actually a bit smaller than I thought. So um, I undenied, I didn't actually end up using them, but I will show you here. I don't know how well you can see, 
and make put a photo in if that doesn't work. But I've got a whole bag. I can't exactly remember how many, but I've got a lot of these. So I'm thinking, well, I've got them now. So the plan is I might possibly, with the black denim, see if I can do a button fly. Now I'm saying that, I haven't actually looked to see how difficult this is because a regular fly was hard enough. <laughs> but if I can do a button fly, I might use them for that because they're the smaller size. If not, I'm thinking I'll make um, a denim jacket at some point and they'd be quite nice all the way down the denim jacket so they won't go to waste. But although I didn't use them, I did get these hemline jeans buttons, which I got from Make, which was where I was doing the course. And um, these worked perfectly. Uh, so they were fine, I just needed the one button. And then also I got these rivets. Oops, I'm not sure you can see. I'll show you them on the jeans. Um, uh, so you need your jeans button, your jeans zip. Mine was just a basic, well, it was the same for both of them. It was a basic, I can't remember how big, but your typical blue jean zipper. And uh, a really handy tool to have, a hammer. <laughs> Anyone on my Instagram might have seen me put this on. I love this. So because I do a lot of handbags, um, then you quite often use a hammer to bash down the bulky seams to get them through your machine and also to put in rivets. Um, although I do have a rivet press now, but I didn't have a jeans button press because um, you need different dies to go in your press. I didn't have that and I wasn't going to buy it just for one pair of jeans. So I've got my good old trusty hammer. So I had all the tools and we were all set up. And like I say, um, with Vanessa and the booklet, I found that it wasn't a difficult sew. Um, it was just a lot of steps. The fly was probably the most confusing for someone uh, like me. It had a lot of steps and a lot of stitch things down, turn it this way, stitch it that way, unpick. A lot of stuff that didn't make sense as I was doing it. But what I highly recommend, if you're not going on a jeans course where obviously you'll have hands-on help, uh, is there's actually a video on YouTube. I cannot remember, and I do apologise. I'll put it down here if I can remember. Um, but there is a sew-along. Um, a lady over in America did a live sew-along quite a long time ago, I think, but she's recorded it and it's up on YouTube. And she does step-by-step -step every bit of the ginger jeans. And I have to say... <laughs> I did a bit of swatting up before the course and I watched her video quite a few times. So I felt quite comfortable that with Vanessa's help on the day and with that knowledge and the booklet, it would be fine. And it really was. So I know a lot of people say, wow, you know, jeans. And I am, don't, don't get me wrong, I am proud of myself. I do love my jeans. But it's really just a lot of steps. Um, so I would recommend anyone having a go, you know, why not? Why not make your own jeans? So the toile went really well, as I say, just needed a bit of trimming down. Did have one kind of disaster. <laughs> so day one making the toile, we then went back and obviously laid the toile down on the pattern pieces to make any adjustments to the pattern pieces. And then we went home and cut out our actual fabric ready for day two. I made a slight error of judgment when marking my <laughs> pattern pieces I uh, I decided no no I'm not going to use a pencil no no I'm not marking my pattern pieces with pencil I'm going to use my friction pen and if any of you have used friction pens and you know why people use friction pens it's because they erase and clever me when I got home I thought I'll iron my pattern pieces <laughs> before I put them on my fabric so all my hard work getting everything ready and uh, marking the pattern. I erased it all away the minute I put the iron on the friction pen. So don't do that. <laughs> Pencil. Pencil's great. Uh, so obviously I had to get my toile back out and remark them and do them again. So I was a little bit annoyed with myself but that was just uh, just learning really, isn't it? I mean when do we ever do a project all the way through without learning something? Um, so I did manage to get the pattern pieces redrafted and um, I cut out my denim and we went in and um, got our jeans made. Now I'll show you on my real jeans, all the little bits and pieces. So here they are, my lovely ginger jeans. And um, I'm really proud of how they turned out. And I think for less than a year of dressmaking, um, I never thought I'd be able to do this. So um, I'd also encourage anyone else who thinks it's beyond them to give it a go, honestly. 
I took my time. It was, I don't know, I don't remember. It was like three months, but I only sewed every now and then and a bit at a time after I finished the two day course. So in the end, as I say, I used this jeans button and I don't know how well you can see, hopefully you can see the rivets. Um, now one of the most exciting things I've seen, which I see a lot of on Insta, um, Instagram, is the um, pocket designs. So uh, the lovely Laura, if you check her out on the Specky Seamstress, she did some fabulous glasses, which obviously uh, matched her wonderfully. And also Anna over at You Got Me In Stitches did some lovely little birdies on hers. Now I um, downloaded the 30, I think it's 33 patterns um, or designs that they do on Closet Case Patterns site and spent ages thinking, oh, I like this one, I like that one. And do you know what? On the day, I just drew a couple of lines and thought, what does that look like? So my jean pockets look like this. And I think that's come out really well. And although it's nothing fancy, um, I think they look really smart and I was really proud of them. I think another time I would put one of those little labels at the side. Um, I've got some that say like me made, fabulous, etc. Um, so it look a bit more like a real Levi or, or other type of jean with the label. Top stitching I was really pleased with, come out really well. Um, what I did do for the top stitching was I did um, practice. So I just, just grab this down here. I would always recommend when you're doing something, you know, that's going to really show up like this top stitching obviously is a contrast. So it's really going to show. So I did practice and decided on that. So I knew my length and tension and everything and then went ahead and did it on my jeans. I also use my back pocket to keep my phone in. So I put rivets on both corners to really stabilize and strengthen the pocket because obviously the phone's always going in and out. Um, and similarly, I did the same with the front pockets. So I've got one on the coin pocket and then one on each corner of the main pockets. And inside, I wanted to have that little pop of color and anyone who knows me or watches my channel knows that I've got quite a lot of quilting cotton from my bag making. And my favourite of all is the fabulous Tula Pink's designs. This is one of hers. And it's actually, sadly, <laughs> it's upside down. So when I cut it out, I didn't really think it through. But they're meant to be like skulls. Um, I don't know if you can see. But... I just think the pop of colour of the sort of acid yellow and green looks really good. And as you can see, I did it on the belt as well. And also I did, if I can see, uh, where are we? I did do it on the pockets inside. Um, so I think it's a great way to use up some cotton scraps and really also anything with bright colour. Um, if that's what you like, um, it looks really good. I like it. Uh, what I would say in future, or for my next pair, I will make sure I interface the waistband because I didn't do the interfacing on the waistband and because it's cotton as opposed to, uh, quilting cotton as opposed to denim, it's not very firm. So the waistband's not as firm as I would like, if that makes any sense. So next time I would interface all the way around the waistband. And then, oh, you may have seen put my little Kylie in the machine label in as um, it was mine and I wanted to show that, I don't know if you can see, but it says, yes, I made it. And um, like I say, the fly is just a lot of steps, really. Once you've done all the steps um, and uh, like I say, if you're unsure, check out Closet Case Patterns do their own blog where they do it step by step and also the lady on YouTube, she does a really good example. Um, Inside, I overlocked pretty much everything. So I don't know if you can see, um, I overlocked the seams. I did forget to flat, um, what do they call it? No, I'm gonna have to look that up. I wanna say flat seam, but I don't think that's right. The, the inside of the legs I was going to do the, the, the way jeans normally do, to make it thicker and stronger. 
but when I stitched the side up to see if the fit was good, I then was so excited, I went ahead and stitched up the side without remembering. So that's another thing I remember is to go back and do those inside seams. And also, um, my machine did struggle a little bit with the thickness. I don't know if you can see that is when it came to putting on the belt loops. So what I did in the end, um, Vanessa suggested quite rightly, was not to do the um, top stitching when it was too thick, just to put the loops on inside and then turn them over. And I only top stitched there where there was thinner fabric. And at the back, what I would do another time, because it's so thick, because I had not only the belt loop, but I've put it right on the seam, so that was thick as well, I would just move it slightly to the side so I don't have to do that but they did go on and um, I think that all in all oh, they look really good and like I say I wear them all the time and um, I love a good pair of jeans so I'm definitely making some more so learning points for me and anything that might be helpful to you would be the um, obviously Make sure you do the seams on the inside before you sort the side, because then you can't go back and do it. So one other thing that I did, which um, in hindsight, I'll make sure I don't do quite the same, is like I say, I have quite skinny legs. So we took it in quite a lot, and um, I really wanted the nice skinny fit. I didn't think through when it comes to the hems. So when I hemmed it, obviously I did a straight stitch, across the hem which has no real stretch in it and obviously now when I put it on I struggle to get it over the heel of my foot so I'm doing the old <laughs> lying down pull on your jeans kind of thing and when I take them off I have to pull them down until they're on the floor and then tread <laughs> on one leg it's very graceful <laughs> tread on one leg and gently pull until I can get my foot out it's the only way I could get my foot out of the, <laughs> the hem because it doesn't stretch. So um, next time I will make it slightly larger and I might even put a stretch stitch in, like um, the triple stitch, because that will give a bit of stretch so that I can get into my jeans and out of my jeans without looking like a complete idiot. <laughs> so that is it for me with this video. I do hope you've enjoyed. If you've made ginger jeans or are thinking of making ginger jeans, anything that you'd like to say or ask, please do put it in the comments. And as always, if you haven't subscribed but you really enjoyed my videos, I'd love it if you could subscribe and press that bell. It will really help my channel and get everyone, um, get more people seeing it. Um, the more that see it, uh, the more that YouTube will show it to people. And um, I would really appreciate that. So my overall impression of the ginger jeans is that they were well written and they're a great pattern and I will be making more and um, I hope I've inspired someone to give it a go because if I can make it and I've only been really sewing clothes less than a year then you can make it too and why not who doesn't love a good pair of jeans right I'm gonna sign off and I will see you all in my next video